I'd like to call the meeting to order Monday, October 15th, 2012. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jewel Warner will lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight and we thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you for your blessings. And we just come to you on behalf of the, the mayor and the board and uh, on behalf of the city. And we ask that you help us to con conduct the business. We pray for wisdom and knowledge to do it appropriately and that it would be in order and according to your will. We pray that you'll forgive us where we fail you and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please show all present tonight at the meeting. Next item on the agenda will be approval of minutes from October 1st, 2012. Entertain a motion to approve those. I make a motion. Motion from Jewel Horner is our second. Second. Second from Robert Taylor Jr. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda unfinished business. Is there any unfinished business? <coughs> Next item new business. This time I'd like to ask Kenny Wright, manager of Cable One, to come forward and he wants to uh, make a small presentation to us, I think. Kenny? Thank you uh, for giving me a chance to speak tonight to address some concerns and our responses to some of those concerns. We would like to reassure the board and our customers that providing the best customer service is very important to us. Our customers are not just our customers, they're our, they're our neighbors, they're our friends, and they're our family. And it's very important to us, our success and our service with them. We have been receiving some complaints from our customers that they are receiving a busy signal when they try to make contact with our main customer line. In response to these complaints, we are adding additional customer service lines to our local in inbound calls. This should reduce customers receiving a busy signal. Also, as a reminder, we provide two service support telephone numbers to our customers, our 285-4174, plus our company-wide telephone number at 877-692-2253. If you receive a busy signal at our 285 number, we encourage our customers to call our 877 number. Both of these lines provide or have our associates to answer any questions or concerns that our customers may have and provide information regarding our services. <coughs> We acknowledge that the transition to our new digital video service has not been without inconvenience to some of our customers. During the deployment and development of this latest video technology, we have encountered several problems related to software issues. We have also worked with our customers extensively to customers to educate them on the new service and the equipment itself. We also believe we have resolved the software debugging issue that occurred this last week. However, if a customer is still experiencing trouble, we, we really appreciate it if they would call us directly. <clears throat> Please remember that Dyersburg is the first system in Cable One to launch this new technology, and we are developing better and quicker escalation processes to resolve these problems faster and better. We will be issuing a credit of $3 to all of our customers in response to the video issues that was experienced last week, last Friday. We, we do not want these types of problems to affect our relationships with our customers and our all-time customer service scores that our company has recently received. We will continue to work hard to provide the best customer service that we can. Thank you. Kenny, I have a question about this 877. Is that an after hours number and the 285 number is a uh, normal working hours number locally? 
our customers should be able to call either number after hours, after five, and, and reach our services. And reach it, okay. Yes. Thank you. Would that be on weekends too? Yes, sir, 24-7. I didn't get an answer Sunday night. Yeah, part of, the, part of the issue is we're trying to get some more additional lines like I described, and we hope that will resolve some of the problems. When would those lines be in? Uh, Effective uh, this afternoon, I hope. This afternoon. If not, you know, sometime this week. We're okay. trying to get it. All right, thank you. Have you lost a number of customers uh, as a result of the um, uh, service that you've been able to offer recently? Um, no, we actually, after the deployment of this of our new service, we actually gain customers. Our our customer service course has escalated. We have we have had issues like I described, but we haven't lost customers. We've actually gained customers. We 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 traditionally trend down this time of year, but. Um, we, uh, we haven't lost any because of it, so we're happy about that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, Kenny, we appreciate the okay. update. Thank you. Appreciate thank you being here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Marshall, thank you for coming too. We appreciate it. Uh, next item on the agenda is attorney invoice that was attached to your agenda, amount 7,256.25, entertain a motion to approve that. So moved. Motion from Bob Kirk, is there a second? Second. Second from Robert Taylor, Jr. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda public hearing for a beer permit, Casey's General Store, number 3092, 1950 St. John Avenue, Dyersburg, 38024. Chief Owen. Good evening. Uh, based on the investigations conducted by the various city departments responsible for those investigations, the uh, applicant appears to meet all the requirements are set forth in the ordinance. Okay, entertain a motion to approve the beer permit. So moved. Motion from Kevin Cheney. Is there a second? Second. Second from Bob Kirk. This is a public hearing. Anybody in the audience wish, wish to speak to this? Anybody in the audience wish to speak to this? Seeing no, got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Chief. Next item on the agenda, bids, Greg Williams. I have a bid tonight for the solid waste uh, management department is for the landfill. It uh, is to replace the undercarriage on the 2008 cat dozer that is worn out. This is for the parts only. The labor will be provided by a vendor locally. It is budgeted in the repair and maintenance budget, and there's also a sole source. Is this is the only um, place to get the, these parts is at the dealer. So I would recommend the award uh, to award the bid to Thompson Machinery of Jackson for sixteen thousand seven sixty-seven forty-eight. Heard the recommendation. Entertain a motion to approve this. So moved. Motion from Dennis Moody. Is there a second? Second. Second from Terry Glover. Any discussion? I got no. a question on this. No. Go ahead. Go ahead, Bob. Is any was any guarantee on this undercarriage or is, is cat? Uh, uh, no, we hope to have uh, prolonged the, the replacement. And if you'll recall, this 2008, our, our initial uh, intent was to replace after five years so we get the maximum resale value out of it. And we hope to not have to do that, but it had gotten to where it's, it's uh, eating into the, the rails and it's going to cause further damage if we don't go ahead and do it. No sort of warranty by a cat no. on uh, the no, it's normal. I'd heard that there might be. I just didn't Normal know. wear and tear. Okay. Thank you. Didn't we have this on another dozer and we uh, had this undercarriage uh, replaced? That was on the 2006, I believe it is. Okay. How did it do? I mean, how did it hold up after we replaced it? We've had it on there about a year or so. Okay. I mean, it, this is normal. Uh, I forgot how many hours. I think it's like 3,000 hours oh, okay. to get out of a set of, of the undercarriage. Next item on the agenda, Recreation Committee meeting from October 3rd, 2012. Chairman Bart Williams. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Um, October 3rd, 2012, at 9 a.m. at the Intermediate School. Um, members of the committee present were uh, Mayor Holden, Terry Glover, and me. Um, uh, Alderman Bob Kirk was also present. Others present were Andy Baker of Parks and Recreation, Randy Butler, the Y. 
Scott Ball from City Engineering, Jim Stark, Patrick Gray. Motivated by an idea which Mr. Lanham is not acting as city attorney, acting as a citizen, um, discussing the use of existing sidewalks uh, that could be designated as urban hiking trails throughout the city. And he identified a loop trail system and suggested that these existing walkways could be identified as to degree of difficulty, slope and presented a map um, with an overview of the sidewalks, emphasizing their connectivity to various parts of the community, the city parks, the uh, community college, and the downtown area. Um, we also discussed the connectivity issue um, and potential sidewalk uh, along Parkview Avenue. Also noted that the use of painted pedestrian Prior meeting with the Pioneering Healthy Communities Committee, Dr. Boyer, President of Dyersburg State, um, welcomed the concept of sidewalk additions, but stated the college would have to request this through their Tennessee Board of Regents. Um, Mayor Holden moved to initiate a letter to Dr. Boyer as recommended by the Pioneering Healthy Communities Committee and to pursue designing, planning, and general city recreation projects, um, recommendations that promote better recreation and health of the community. The motion was seconded by Alderman Terry Glover and is approved uh, by the full committee and will be recommended to the full Alderman board at the next regular board meeting. And I think to um, state that maybe more succinctly, um, the Pioneering Healthy Communities Committee is a committee of concerned citizens um, is seeking the blessings of the board and the mayor to explore um, walkway and bikeway initiatives for the city of Dyersburg, not to negotiate on behalf of the city of Dyersburg, and that's a fine distinction because we don't, would not make commitments, uh, but we've got a, a body of concerned citizens who are willing to do the legwork and, and look at things and put plans on the board and then bring them back to recommend to the board, perhaps through the Recreation Committee. Um, and so our, our, the resolution that we, um, that we um, approved at that meeting was to um, allow the Pioneering Healthy Communities Committee to um, to explore, uh, investigate, and to make recommendations to the city board. And I think it's just a, you know, a kind of a spirit of the um, movement sort of thing. There's no, you know, um, obligation to the city, no no ties or or any binding agreements implied in that. Um, but with that said, I would um, recommend that we. Um, allow the Pioneering Healthy Communities Committee, which is um, an existing committee um, based at this time, you know, out of the Dyers, uh, Dyersburg Dyer County YMCA to explore uh, further uh, health and recreation um, initiatives on behalf of the city. Okay. Is that your motion? I think that's a motion. I don't know if I said it very well, but. Okay. We have a motion. Is there a second? A second. Second from Jewel. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay. The rest of the meeting um, <laughs> had to do with uh, Scott Ball from the engineering department talking about um, some of the current grants and projects that we're working on. Um, and one of the most interesting things, he presented a flow chart that um, showed the steps involved. We, of course, um, last uh, it was last fall, learned that we won the um, Safe Routes to Schools grant, but there's a flow chart that would probably discourage people from applying for that grant if they saw it beforehand. Um, and he said it's likely to be a four-year process to dot all those I's and cross all those T's. But, but he assured us that we're, um, we're on track and we're doing the things we need to do to, to realize that. Um, we also uh, gave us an update on the Reagan Levy project, which will pave Reagan Levy from basically from the bypass down to the edge of the farmer's market property. Uh, and finally, Mayor Holden provided a brief reminder about additional grants concurrently administered by the city um, and uh, um, Recreation and Parks Director Andy Baker reported a uh, recent and very successful softball tournament hosted by the Activity Center. Um, and 
Our meeting concluded at 10 o'clock. Thank you very much. Thank you, Barb. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda, report from Alderman. Bob Kirk. I don't have anything, Mayor. Bart? I'm talked out at this point. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Terry Glover? No report. Kevin Chaney? I have a question. Is there, when they pave that Reagan Levy road, will that open it to through traffic? Uh, only for bikes and pedestrians. They're going to use, bikes, um, what do they call them, bullards that set into, I mean, it, it'll be accessible for maintenance and I guess for emergency police use and things like that. That's my understanding. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Jewel? Yes, um, I would like to announce that we will have an educational meeting on I Islam tomorrow night at the farms at 630. Dr. Bill Warner is a national and international speaker on Islam, and he's an author of over a dozen books on Islam, the Quran, and Sharia law. And I would like to welcome everyone, and there's no charge. Thank you. Dennis? Mayor, I've had uh, several people asking about the around the square downtown at night how dark it is. Are we uh, putting some additional lighting up? Yes, sir, we are. That was uh, included in the Phase 2 uh, downtown redevelopment program. The lights are supposed to be in, I think, this weekend. They're going to be similar or the same lights as what's on the inside okay. of the square. And these will be on the merchant side of the square. So hopefully very soon uh, the outside of the square will be lit as well. But the lights okay. are coming. that's all in. I have. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Joan? Robert Taylor Jr. I don't have anything. All right, thank you. I just got a, <clears throat> a couple of things. Uh, I passed out to all the aldermen uh, uh, an update the first six months of this year, local option sales tax. Um, 2011 uh, local option sales tax collected. Uh, this is January through June, $737,964.35 as compared to $795,730.68 through the first six months 2012. That's an increase in our local option sales tax of 7.8%. Uh, for the city of Dyersburg. Also, we're going to start reporting uh, income and uh, revenue and expenses at the airport. Uh, this is for August 2012. The revenue at the airport, the city of Dyersburg, was 60,578.05 uh, versus expenses of 57,043.67. So we've had a, a profit at the airport in the month of August, and certainly we're all glad to see that. So we'll start reporting that on a monthly basis and providing that uh, to the aldermen as well as far as the revenue. And with that, we're adjourned. Thank you.